So I'm just doing a new video on laryngeal hemiplegia. Laryngeal hemiplegia is a condition we sometimes commonly refer to as roaring. It's in a dysfunction of the left side of the larynx and it causes a characteristic whistling sound. Commonly it can be performance limiting for racehorses and eventers at higher level because it restricts the amount of air they can take in. We do also see the problem presenting in performance horses, whether it's dressage or show jumpers. And often one of the things we'll find is the horse will make a noise. And then when we ask for more collection and we ask that the neck becomes tighter and the gullet and the jawline becomes tighter as you ask for more collection, those horses can sometimes struggle for air. And they will present with poor performance or starting to reef the reins out of the rider's hands. So it's something to be aware of and something you should probably understand why we grade it and we grade it in different ways. So I hope you enjoy the video and thank you. So when we start to look at the roaring as a condition, we need to start to understand the anatomy. Now the anatomy is really important so we can understand it. So first thing first is because we're looking at the throat, the right hand side of the screen is actually the left hand side of the throat. So it's important to understand that when we're looking at it, because this condition is left sided, we will see most of the changes on the right hand side of the screen. And that's the area we'll be looking at in more detail as we go through. So the first thing we'll look at is the arytenoid cartilages. These are highlighted by the two yellow arrows. There's a left and right side obviously, um, with the right side on the left of the screen and the left side on the right of the screen. And that's because we're looking at the throat from the nose. When we're grading roaring, we're looking for the symmetry of movement and these should both fully abduct and be held out while the horse is breathing in and breathing out. Horses that are roarers will have an inability or reduced range of motion of the right hand side of the screen, the left arytenoid cartilage. Now we're looking at the vocal cords. These are again highlighted by the arrows and there's the ventricles in the other side of those which are removed at surgery sometimes. So the vocal cords, they're what makes the noise. So when they're fluttering and moving in the air as the horse breathes in or breathes out, that's when you get the abnormal respiratory noise. Vocal cords, similar to you and I, are all involved in making sound when a horse neighs. And so any horse that's had throat surgery to remove these or affect these will have a, a change in their whinny and it's quite obvious and quite characteristic. Often a lot of horses that are roarers, you can actually pick, hear them. You can hear them in the barn, they've got a different neigh to normal and it is abnormal. Next we look at the epiglottis. So the epiglottis is a tongue-like structure that sits on top of the soft palate. Abnormal position of the epiglottis with in reference to the soft palate can co cause horses to displace the soft palate and they can make a characteristic noise as well. Displacing the soft palate is something I'll deal with in another video but you can see here you've got the epiglottis sitting on top of the soft palate with nothing obstructing or changing the view of what we can see. Next we're looking at the soft palate. The soft palate separates the mouth from the nasal cavity. It's made up of two portions, the soft palate here which is sits underneath the epiglottis and that's a normal position. When a horse swallows the food will come up from underneath the epiglottis and the soft palate will stem where it is. Any horses that have a tongue tie or a crossover um, they'll often have an issue where they're displacing the soft palate so the epiglottis ends up underneath and they will make a characteristic noise as well that is very much like something fluttering in the wind. So now that we've learned the anatomy of the throat, it's really important to understand the anatomy. So when we start to discuss the condition of roaring specifically, that we understand what we're looking at. We're looking at the retinoid cartilages and the function. And lucky thing, they've got a left and right side. So we're looking at the synchrony of movement of those cartilages as the horse breathes in and breathes out. Now, there's a couple of different ways to diagnose roaring condition. One is at rest with a resting end endoscope exam. That's often the easiest. It's done routinely in a stable. The next option is to do a dynamic endoscope. And with that, at the, by that we mean we're putting an endoscope up the nose and we're then exercising the horse while we're recording the video of the horse of the horse's throat. That is the most sensitive way to diagnose roaring. 
and it gives us the best information. So sometimes your host, we might recommend your host as a dynamic endoscope exam. And the reason for that is because we want to look at specifically what's going on. Resting endoscopy is not 100% specific and we have to be very careful not to overinterpret. There are horses that will have poor function at rest, but actually at full gallop they're absolutely fine and it's not a problem. So, roaring's not black and white, it's graded. So grade one, two, there's several different grading systems, but the basic one that I like to use is the lane scale, which is grade one, two, three, four and five. Grade one is normal synchronous movement. So as the horse breathes in, the left and the right side go up at the same time. They're held in position and there's no movement. Grade two, there's a slight delay on the right, on the left side of the horse, but it gets full abductions held. Grade three, often what will happen is there'll be an asynchrony in movement as you go up, the horse will hold it up and it will drop slightly. Now grade four is when you cannot get full abduction. So often those horses will look like that with one side hanging down a little bit. Grade five is this paralysis and there's no movement whatsoever of the cartilage. And that is the most severe form of it. They unfortunately don't need a dynamic endoscope. We can diagnose those at rest. So, we're now looking at a real life video endoscope exam here. Uh, we're just coming up into the larynx. It's important you'll see we're flushing air and water through the scope to clean it. Now we're looking here of the right hand side of the screen. You'll see the left hand side of the larynx. Now the function here is not symmetrical and it does fall in quickly. So this horse unfortunately is a grade 3 roar using the lane scale. Some people could maybe argue a two, and this is one of the difficulties with grading these. It is a subjective, um, it's not a completely subjective way to assess them, and it is an objective assessment. So some vets might grade this two, some grade three. With this horse, this would be a grade three. It's not affecting performance at the minute. The horse is racing well. It is a race horse, and has continued to go forward so we'll just monitor this but it is interesting to have a look at and see the differences and you can even see during the exam that the function does vary between different swallowing methods and different times. So I hope you've enjoyed the video it's a interesting topic it's something I deal with every day when we look at a racehorse throat or any other horse that we're doing an endoscopic examination. Every vet as part of their routine of doing an endoscopic exam will assess the function of the throat and check for any other abnormalities. So any questions, put them in the comment section below and happy to answer them. Looking forward to doing the next one. The next one we're going to do is epiglottic entrapments, which is another interesting thing in the throat. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Bye.